Hello students, it's a pleasure to welcome you all to this digital session. This is Grace Joshua, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Teachers Academy Degree College, Hennor, Bangalore. The topic for today is a poem from Indian Literature for 6M Optional English Students, Bangalore University. Let's begin the session with a short introduction to one of the most revered poets from Karnataka. Dr. Chandrasekhar Kambar is one of the major Kannada writers, recipient of Gnanapeet Award and various other prestigious awards. He enjoys a very prestigious and unique place in the field of post-independence Kannada literature. The other feathers in his cap include 25 plays, 11 anthologies of poems, 5 novels, 16 research works, 7 scholarly write-ups on folk theatre, literature and education. We are privileged to read his works as most of them have been translated into English and other regional languages and some of them have been even filmed. He is the founder, vice chancellor of Humpy University and has contributed a lot with indigenous contemplations to the development of Kannada language, literature and various other disciplines through Kannada language. Let's continue to understand Dr. Kamba's writings about his genres. His writings are enriched by a very dense folk environment. He is passionate for plentitude, celebration, completeness, freedom, and creativity through his creations. Celebration of plentitude gives enormous strength to his myth-making. He also opines that universal truths creatively shown through mythological models can make subaltern class respond to intellectual creations and it is very important to these intellectual creations. The wealth of his writing reaches the roots and extracts the strength of indigenous wealth in the form of myths. He renders multidimensionality to modern contemplations. Dear students, let's go to the poem. The title of the poem is The Feigned of Folk Tales. I repeat, The Feigned of Folk Tales. Dr. Kambar through this poem, strikes the issue of the day each one of us go through with the conflict of tradition and modernity. Isn't it true, students? He clearly captures the conflict between tradition and modernity. By the way, let me tell you what is tradition. It is a ritual belief in the form of values passes down from generation to generation within a society. Modernity can be defined as those sets of ideas or beliefs which are ever flowing and evolving like a stream. The fend in the poem is the creative symbol of folklore. And what's folklore? It's a traditional beliefs, customs, stories of community passed through generations by word of mouth. Dear students, as we understand from the previous slide that there's a conflict between tradition and modernity and it's quite evident that in an age of technological innovation, the place of folklore is limited. The fend, who is the creative symbol of folklore, has a great role to play. He has been given the name Roaring Laughter, suggesting carefree environment, enjoyment of his life. 
Unfortunately, he is enjoying his life with no seriousness at all. We also understand from the poem that technology seems to have had the kind of insensible effect on man. In a world of stocks and shares, the automatic robot is considered better than a man. Finally, the sad state of the faint was finally reduced to a museum piece, a thing of the past. In this poem, the poet writes a kind of an elegy, literally a poem of serious reflection, typically a lament for the dead. The folk culture is lost. The traditions are dying with rising modernity. Moving further, beginning from the first stanza, the poet writes that those were the rich traditional days of folk tales and folklore. It's a clear revelation of carefree life, enjoying nature without any orientation towards life. Though the laughter was neither good nor bad, there is serious amount of carelessness. The poet also clarifies that the story of his life had no beginning or end, neither had any likes or dislikes. This indicates the mere loss of precious time without any goal in life. So these are the traditional days of the Fend explained in stanza 1. Moving on further, Tradition in the backdrop of the past had no memories in terms of folklore or folk stories. Look at the seas, forests, nothing is revealed. What about the beautiful nature? It's chopped off. The poet couldn't hear any parrot stories or the princesses. The rich heritage is bygone with no memories. There's a valid reason behind the scene because her dear faint needed no more traditional values. He is now completely obsessed with modernity. New things, better things supposedly. The writing on the wall is crystal clear with modernity engulfing culture with nothing left to pass on. As we further move on and understand from the poem that one fine day, the faint got up in the morning and started aping his culture by adorning his horns with jasmine flowers and so on. Unfortunately, it was quietly whiling away time, doing nothing in particular. It was a clear picture of unperturbedness despite the rich heritage to be passed on. Life definitely has second chances sometimes, but inability to utilize well loses the precious opportunities. As the poet is deeply perturbed with the events turning worse as modernism has completely conquered tradition, the fen totally forgot its own culture, which is an allegory to the present generation we live in. The folk tale hasn't any association with its own culture. Personally, I suppose, as one forgets one's own mother or our loved ones, our mind has been captured by something unwanted. The poet reveals his pathos in the depth of his lost wealth goodness, kindness, simplicity, generosity, etc. One could have learned and passed on through the tool of blessed tradition. Unfortunately, all is over. Dear students, as we understand further, the Fed has now found a new place altogether that is out of tradition, a civilized border, a completely a new border, so huge to understand. There are businesses everywhere in every form. The business of money, 
the bulls and bears, has taken over the world. This had become an endless procession run by stupid people. There was no title of culture and folklore to be seen. Everything was lost in the name of modernity and business. Tradition has lost its name. Folklore lost its sheen. Such a sad story. Nowhere to mend again at this point of time. As we move further, it doesn't stop here. There's more coming in. The fan now totally immersed in modernism has been compared to the man-made machines, the robots. When compared to a folk tale, it is far better in performance as it can jump the skies, play Star Wars, provoke people and do many more things. Therefore, robot is considered better than the other. Fend lost its importance and usefulness. Here's the war. The situation turned out to be the worst because there was a furious battle between the Fend and the robot. The robot beat him up black and blue. What a terrible shock. Isn't the same condition as humans we face being shamed by our own creations? Too late to mend them? Overpowered, depressed and beaten. The poet allegorically depicts the overpowered state of our creation and it happens because we don't value nature but give more importance to technology. Dear students, if we just pause a little and analyze it is so evident that each one of us face these challenges on a daily basis. It's a time to reflect and renew the good things of life before we have been completely shattered. Is there an escape to our dear faint? We've got to find. As we come to the end of the poem, Dr. Kamba finds no refuge for the badly beaten faint. Sadly, even the folk tale was pitiless to him and let him alone, dragged him, made a frame out of it, displayed in the museum. What a pitiable condition. What a correlation into our own lives. Dear students, we need to learn lessons in life, but better not the hard way. Neglecting beautiful values of past in the name of modernism is mere stupidity. It's time to understand our place in the right way to make a meaningful life. In conclusion, I would like to reflect from the poem by Dr. Kambar that in every age, there's a tussle between tradition and modernity. The moderns of every age have regarded tradition as old and obsolete. Therefore, tradition is considered useless to the needs and ethos of the modern times. But tradition definitely is an indicator of the path trodden and need to be understood in proper context. A tradition is kept alive by being subjected to continual scrutiny and renewal. There is all the difference between a tradition that is alive and one that is lifeless and backward looking. On the other hand, therefore, modernity is the quality of being current. Acceptance of new belief and practice is modernity. Merely turning back on tradition is not modernity. Modernity is by no means a painless process, but society as a whole pays a higher price by turning its back on the changes emanating from the outside world in order to safeguard all its ingrained beliefs and practice. Therefore, let's understand to use wisely right things at right time for best purpose. Dear students, 
I do hope that you've got a fair understanding to this beautiful poem by the eminent Kannada poet Dr. Chandrasekhar Kambar. I do want to reiterate that this is definitely not an exhaustive explanation into the topic. Kindly add your thoughts and live experiences to bring the poem alive. Thank you for this opportunity of sharing. I request to kindly pardon any errors to the learning and add in the comments for further learning. Thank you.